Hello. Well, uh, after that uh, fiasco with uh, the uh, servo, uh, rudder servo that I made, um, we've obviously got to replace it with something more satisfactory. In any case, we were planning to use some kind of worm screw or lead screw. And um, meanwhile, Dick has uh, located a miniature commercial uh, linear actuator which is uh, plug compatible with ordinary RC servos. Uh, and this video is just about the tests, the initial tests we did on that actuator before putting it in the boat. So, Dick found this Canadian firm Actuonics, which does these rather neat uh, miniature linear actuators. And we chose the L16R range because it's uh, compatible with ordinary RC servos. In other words, it takes a PWM signal. Um, and we chose the 35 to 1 reduction and a 100 millimeter stroke. And that gives a maximum lifting force of 50 newtons, which is 5 kilograms force. Uh, and it runs off 6 volts, um, which is uh, 1 volt less than the actual power supply we've got. We've got a 5 volt power supply, but uh, we put an up converter in there uh, just to bring it up to 6 volts. The um, couple of disadvantages of this actuator are, firstly, it's only IP54, so it's not really waterproof. And secondly, it has a duty cycle of a maximum duty cycle of 20%. And it seems likely that in a real situation, the rudder might be being used more than that. But um, so far, we haven't had a problem with it. So Dick kindly bought one of these things at the amazing price of $70. Presumably that's Canadian dollars. Um, and uh, we did some tests on it. Right, we're just measuring the current consumption at 6 volts. Um, this unit here takes 12 milliamps by itself. So it appears that when the, th the motor is idle, it's taking 3 milliamps. And that when it's moving, it takes 150... 6. 153, 154? Yeah. 150, something between 100... Did you go up to 155 as you changed it? 150. 50. Yeah. Right, then, if we just leave it in the middle position, it's taking about, well, it settles down eventually to 15 mA, 3 mA, which that, that is. It takes a bit of time to settle down. Eventually, it decides to stop jittering around. It's good. If you apply a bit of load to it, mm. nothing. Nothing. That's just once it's settled down. Totally rigid. And if we disconnect the power completely, it should drop back to 12, shouldn't it? Should do. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's drawing and it's drawing three three milliamps just to hold it. Three milliamps, yeah, effectively nothing because it's just decided to go to sleep. Yeah. It's 155 at maximum to move it. And then it, it fizzles around for, what, 10 seconds? Yeah, no, less than that. Do it again. Let me get my. Right. Not, not fiddling, huh? No. Right. Four seconds. Fiddles around for four seconds. Six elephants. Yeah. I thought about that. Yes. Yeah. Fiddle around for four to six seconds yeah. sometimes. Doesn't start again if we fiddle with it. It just. It just. Once it's decided to go to sleep, it goes to sleep. Yeah. Which is pretty good. Can't see anything wrong with that. So what would that be doing? Is it got, um, it's not a stepper motor that we got. 
No, I think it's an ordinary uh, brushed motor. So it's a some way it's controlled with some probably with one of these delightful PID algorithms. So it knows its position by how many rotations it's. No, it knows its position from this potentiometer which it's got in there. Ah, another potentiometer. We, uh, oh, we well, don't that, know where that is. That'd be a sliding one, probably. Could could be. So some of that fiddling around could be just a bit of sensitivity on the. Well, it seems to be slide. in an algorithm. It decides to turn itself off after it's decided it no longer needs to move any further. Sometimes it doesn't immediately. Yeah. There's a very small change I made. You see, it's going to fiddle for a time and then it stops. So, shall we see if it works on five volts? Yeah. Sure. That's 143 it's milliamps. It's, it's a bit slower, but it's not doing too bad, is it? No. Yeah. I just put it right back to the E side. What's that? Uh, two seven. Okay. Two seven. Yeah. And that's eight hundred milliamps it draws then. That's at five volts. Let me put it back to six volts. Right. So. This is, this is a load test at 6 volts, and it goes up to for about 700 milliamps. And 4 kilograms, 4.2 kilograms briefly, and then right. it drops back. Try it again, ready? Yep. 700 milliamps, no, it's, it's taking an amp now. Before it collapses, it takes an amp. Yeah. Can you go back a bit? Let's give us a bit more. Right, that's it. Right, ready? Yeah. Seven. That's one, one One amp, one amp, one amp, one amp. No, four it goes nine. down to nothing before it relaxes, yes. That was four nine on that. Four nine kilograms. So yeah. if we can supply an amp, then we can, you can get four or five kilograms. Briefly? Yes. And this is. The, the interesting thing is, what are you doing now? You're not just doing nothing. Just nothing, right? So why doesn't it? Know? Oh, that's because it's that's the position we're putting it at, and it just goes slightly beyond it and then comes back again. Could be. See if it settles down and we get the fifteen milliamps again. Right. Now, now, now if, I, um, if I put a strain on it, no, it doesn't, doesn't mind at all. doesn't mind at all. No. Yeah. That's a little bit annoying. Let me get this back in, inside. That's it. Still trying to settle down, you see, because it's got a load on it, rather than just just rather than just going to a position and stopping. Yes. So is it is it going to stop now? So it, that's about two hundred milliamps. Yeah. No, I'm just holding it still. At six volts. And it's not stopping. It keeps. It's in a cycle, isn't it? No, oh, but it stopped uh, now. It took a while. Yes, yeah, took a while. So if I just increase the, uh, tell it to pull itself in a bit. It's going up to about 380 milliamps. It's got more load on it as well. What's the load? Uh, two, uh, two going up between, two between 1, 8 and 2, 3, something like that. Kilograms. Yeah. Is it going to settle down, or is it? 
Of course, the, the rod is not going to be exerting such a massive force on it, but at some point it should stop, shouldn't it? Or maybe no. it's just at some settings like this, it, it's, it's yeah. going to oscillate forever. Yeah, it seems... And if, if I let it out a little bit... Yeah. Will it stop there? But in real life, the force is not going to be a spring balance pulling on it, so I think no. we, we'd, be, we'd be okay. <laughs> Maybe we should have another vice over there. I, I, I do have another vice. Oh, let's, let's do that, because it was... All right. The more I, the more I held it, the more I, I could feel my fingers wanting to shake a little bit. <laughs> Just to eliminate the human element, we've got another vice holding the spring balance at that end. So let's see what happens now. Is that readable on the camera? Yes, I think it is. All right. Okay. Well, it's in view. It's in yeah, whether it's yeah. readable or not is another question. <laughs> so if I pull it in a bit now, yeah. so it goes into an oscillation with the current going up to 340 milliamps. That's at 6 volts. And it seems that it never stops unless we do something to re remove the load, which we can't do now because it's in the vice. But if we completely remove the load, then it stops. And if we then reapply the load, it, it still sits at 3 milliamps. Yeah. But it, if I were to tell it to go out of it... There's less of a load. Yeah. So it that stops there. there. Stops there. Yeah, so over about 0.7 it has difficulty. If I just manually now, once it's once it decided to turn itself off, it can hold yeah. whatever load you've got. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's a slight so if you, uh, disadvantage. If you, if, you, if you pull the, the power lead out of that, will it just freeze at whatever position it's in? Yes. At, at no voltage? Yeah. So... And so hold, hold up to four kilograms or, yeah. or like that. Yeah. It's changing its behaviour, actually, isn't it? It's perhaps it's getting, either getting hot or getting... Yeah. It is quite warm in, inside. Yeah. It, either getting hot or... Getting lubricated or something? We're getting burnt out. <laughs> because before, I thought that we could, we could take, I could take that off there, and it would it would hold that load. It held four kilograms, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But perhaps. No, that doesn't make sense. Um, anyway, it seems to be at least as reliable as my servo. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> but it's got potential to do unpredictable things a little bit. Well, so what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> we were just fiddling with this without the electricity connected at all and uh, discovering that it moves it, and I can move it in and out by hand. And if we move it right up here, fully in, it takes more. I can still that move it at kilograms, that three kilograms. Okay, so it, it can move. I think we're thinking that possibly it's it's got exercised and the. the um, kick it, kick it. Four. So that's four now. Yes. So four kilograms is it? It's actually quite variable, but possibly there's some grease in here that makes it easier to do at some positions than others. Right. Well, we're in my kitchen. Here is Woodstock in a somewhat disassembled state, and we've removed the my servo box, which is there, which was uh, caused us all this trouble yesterday. And Dick has got this new linear actuator here which we've temporarily fixed 
with a few clamps and so on to the rudder and Dick will now demonstrate with his magic radio control <laughs> how it goes. I'll turn the power on. Okay. So if you put your con hands down there so that they can see the control as well, right. it might be better. So, right, here we go. Uh, that turns on the um, controller here. Um, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever works on, on the, when oh, you're on no, video, does it? Once. <laughs> oh. Oh, you, you, you actually need so, to turn the transmitter on. So that was doing nothing. So what's that done? What's just moved that? The autopilot? Could be, yes. It could be the autopilot. Is this magnetic? Yes, that's the autopilot. Because I thought that you could, okay. Right, so turn it on. So turn it, yes. Things always work better when turned on. Yeah. Right, so that's, uh, that's turned on. And uh, this switch switches from the autopilot to the radio control. Right, so you have control, so it goes back yeah. to the middle now. And then I've got left rudder, centre, right rudder. Right. Um, it, it does in addition have trim and an additional... And we can move it a bit further than that, that can't so, we? So, um, this slide at the back here uh, gives it a little bit more. So that's the full movement, that's which is movement. what? Did we say 50 degrees? 50 five, 55 yeah. degrees and we have clearance here. Nothing is fouling there. And so if you move it to the other extent, that, that is inherently limited by the fact that the actuator cannot go any further inside itself. And that again is about 55 And degrees. there's no possibility of that going further into a straight line configuration, which obviously we don't want. Over centre, yeah. So that's really quite neat, isn't it? Right, Dick is going to... What are you going to do, Dick? I'm going to dissect this linear actuator and find out what it's made of inside. Are they good? Because we don't know if it's a brushed or a, a brushless motor. We think it's almost certainly a um, brushed motor. But uh, there's only really one way to find out unless we wait for the message to be answered by the manufacturers. And this costs 67 Pounds. pounds, and it's going to be put back together in a working condition, isn't it? Of course, yes. You bought it, so it's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't care. I suspect that might... Um, Robin seem interested in this, but I suspect <laughs> that uh, when he hears the price, he will um, change his mind. <laughs> so what we've got is a metal gear chain with... Um, one, two, three sets of reductions, I think. Yeah, I, I knew that there would be one, some gear. One, two, three... I think there's four sets of reduction gears. Yes. Um, so you've got to get the power up somehow, haven't you? Hmm. Judging by the... Um, there's a small uh, uh, circuit board here. Yeah. Uh, and judging by the... Motor, it's it is a brushed motor, um, just from the appearance, but I, I yeah. don't know how you'd know beyond that. So you've managed to get the bottom plastic case off now. Yeah, so that comes off like so. The drive from the motor to the lead screw is by this flat um, keyed shaft end. The gearbox is all mounted in a brass yep. um, chassis. And that is a, a ball bearing isn't it because I can see the balls from yep. here. And then you've got two contacts going into the thing. Presumably there's a potentiometer in inside. there. So I don't know what, what's yeah, I guess those are the contacts to the potentiometer. Uh, right, so now this 
Now the lead screw will come up, come up. out and I, I could do with a, a little torch or something. I think that um, the potentiometer is on this strip here. Yes. And the that thing is rubbing up and down on... Uh, yeah. Oh, is, is it just a... Is that just a, a short circuit um, across... What have we got on there? That's just a contact, isn't it? Yes. And it looks like a sort of graphite surface on the... Okay, so it's a long linear potentiometer yeah, that's right, yeah. consisting of a strip of pencil lead... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the lead the lead screw uh, is here. Yes. The the nut on the lead screw looks as if it's conductive. Um, uh, just this area here. I don't know whether it's, it's threaded within the whole of that. Shouldn't think so. No. Know. No. Um, there might be some. So that conductive surface on that. Nut is uh, sliding on the graphite, is it? Yes, that's correct. So, okay. so that's that's uh, so to make the linear potentiometer. potentiometer. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that's the circuit in its entirety. Yeah. Sort of good. And that, uh, but I was just wondering what holds the outside of the ball bearing. Now the the outer edge has got a flat on it on one side. Yes. So that bearing. That bearing has both a flange on the left-hand uh, side of it and a flat. Is that catching the light? Uh, yes, a flat there. Yes, it just it makes the same rubbing noise quicker. Right. Okay. So you can take it apart again. I'm going to apart again. <laughs> we could be here some time. If this goes on much longer, we might have to have a drink, you know, Dick. <laughs> right, so. so we think that that um, flat on the ball bearing should be adjacent to the potentiometer strip, yeah. so that the ball bearing flange doesn't dig into the it's flexible the uh, circuit, circuit yeah. board kind yeah. of thing. I think that's all right. So, summarising our findings, when driving this actuator on 6 volts, uh, the peak current draw was 1 amp and the uh, actuator pulls 5 kilograms force, which was as specified. When moving under no load, it draws about 143 milliamps. Uh, on full load, it automatically cuts out to idle after a few seconds. Um, it draws 3 milliamps when idle and it will hold 5 kilograms force when idle sometimes, falling to 3 kilograms force depending upon usage and shaft position. When loaded by a spring balance, it sometimes oscillates about the commanded position, taking a load-dependent current. Oscillation sometimes stops after a few seconds, sometimes continues indefinitely. When linked by a lever to our rudder, the actuator moves the rudder through 110 degrees in 3.3 seconds at 6 volts, or 4 seconds if run at, under run at 5 volts. Thanks for watching!